Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, one day a couple decided they needed to see a counselor. So they go to the counselor and the counselor asks them, so what's wrong? The woman said, ah, I'm so upset with this guy. He, he always pretends like he's a private detective. I think we should split up. To which the man said, good idea, we can cover more ground that way. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Coalition, the Napoleonic Wars 1805-1815 from Compass Games. In Coalition, the Napoleonic Wars 1805 to 1815 from Compass Games, two to six players take on the various belligerents of Europe during the Napoleonic Wars. There's France, there's Britain, there's Austria, Prussia, Russia, and of course Spain. Now the game is essentially the wars between Britain and France during this period, and the ability to grow various coalitions in order to defeat the French uh, and help the British, and how kind of this interplay works out. Now, as I say, you can play this with each uh, player playing one of the various nations. Now, there's two different kinds of currencies in this game. There's economic points and recruitment points, and you're going to keep track of those on uh, track on the board. You're also going to have room for glory points and victory points, and these are kind of, of course, how you're going to win the game. But essentially, the very first thing you do every round is you have the coalition phase. Now, the uh, British player can choose to spend some of their coalition or their uh, economic points in order to buy a coalition card. Then they have the option of playing that coalition card. What the coalition card does is it creates a coalition. Essentially, it binds uh, various neutral nation nations, otherwise neutral nations, like Austria, Prussia, Russia, etc., to Britain, and they become the British allies. Now, this coalition card is going to be in effect for either two full game turns, two full game rounds or it will um, or the various belligerents within the coalition can be knocked out if they are defeated by the French player or the French player's allies. Next players can spend points uh, to build up their armies. Essentially they can uh, buy uh, armies to put on the board provided that they come in at the time that is appropriate for them to come in. Each player has a home card and it says kind of when various armies can become active and generals can become active, etc. You can also buy event cards and event cards are ways to kind of drive the game. Now the Napoleonic player will want to buy these cards because some of them will allow him to essentially bring some of those other countries into his coalition and uh, they will be allies with him against the British and their allies. Players can then deploy their units that they built in their home territories in anticipation of the action phase. Now the action phase kind of has two parts. It has kind of a movement and attack phase and then a second movement and attack phase. But before each of those you have an attrition phase. Any unit that is outside its home territories or friendly territories has to roll for attrition. You go ahead, you uh, roll a die and you look at the attrition chart and you can see uh, based on how many strength points you have it's going to say how many you lose because through that attrition. Next, the British and their allies move, and they can move uh, units into adjacent areas, and uh, after they've done their movements, they can attack uh, uh, various armies. They can determine which armies they're going to attack. They go ahead and uh, determine which armies they're going to attack. There's markers you place there to show who they're attacking, and then you go ahead and uh, roll die depending on your strength points and other factors. Some, fa some uh, generals will have the ability to um, command kind of larger stacks, and they will also have a mo die modifier printed on them. So you kind of you'll roll your die, you'll look at your die modifier. If the general you're attacking has a modifier, that's a negative. But you go ahead and then you consult the chart and you can see, okay, how many strength points does the attacker lose? How many does the defender lose? Is the defender, does they, do they suffer a major defeat? Do they have to retreat? Uh, or are they given the option to retreat? There's different factors you're gonna get through that one die roll. Then you're gonna go ahead and resolve that. 
after all the British players have gone and moved, then the Napoleonic player, he is going to, again, uh, after you get that attrition done, the second attrition done, the Napoleonic player, he is going to go ahead and he is going to move his units and then he is going to conduct his attacks. Napoleon is going to go ahead. He has got a plus two modifier. He's um, very powerful. He's going to take usually pretty large armies at the beginning of the game. He's going to move them into various places like the Confederation of the Rhine, Prussia, Austria, Spain, Russia, and he's going to be trying to knock those other players out of, uh, out of the battles and out of the coal coalitions that they are currently in. Now there are also fortresses on the board. Uh, there's, I think, three fortresses in France. Um, the British player and their allies are trying to knock France out of the war. They have to take all three of those forts and defeat uh, the field armies there. And the, the uh, uh, Napoleonic player is, of course, trying to inflict these damaging blows on uh, the coalitions and, and its allies. Now, critically, too, whenever Napoleon has a uh, inflicts a major defeat on a player, uh, he can can there, there, there's some some interchange that goes there, and he actually gains a glory point. Uh, anybody who wins a major battle gains a glory point, and I think there's I can't remember if it's ten points, ten glory points equals one victory point. So that moves you up on the victory track. It's the same track, but you got two different markers. So you're going ahead and you're and you're moving those. You do have a winter phase where you return fleets to port, you unstack any armies so they're not under generals. You also have to move uh, your all of your um, uh, EP counters and your RP counters to, to zero in anticipation of the next turn. You can't have those currencies carry over. And then you check for victory points. You see who has got, um, uh, if somebody has achieved a sudden death victory, or if not, you're, you're, you keep moving on. Essentially, uh, Britain wins if they kind of invade France, they succeed in taking the fortresses and securing the country of France, and the French player can win an, a sudden death victory if they inflict the continental system through card play on uh, Britain. If they can do that successfully for, I think, a few game turns, then they win automatically. Now, there's a few other things you can do. Your generals have some maneuvering they can do. They can, you know, get into bigger stacks. They can try to intercept. Generals can also try to evade. They've got to have the red uh, number on them. If it's just a black number, then they can't do those sorts of things. They have to have the stars in order to have these large stacks and multinational armies and things like that. So there's different things that play into that. But players are going to go around back and forth, uh, going through these various phases, playing cards, bringing out certain events that uh, from the Napoleonic Wars. They're going to be attacking each other, fighting each other, and critically they're trying to gain the glory points to gain more victory points and try to get to those sudden death victory conditions. Now if either side is successful in reaching one of those sudden death victory conditions, as I say, either the capture of France or the implication, successful implication of of the uh, continental system for a amount of time, then they instantly win. If not, you go to the end of 1815, you can play through uh, like the 100 days, Napoleon has a card of the 100 days, but you get to the end of the game and uh, you add up your glory points, translate those into victory points, and whoever has the most victory points wins. Coalition, the Napoleonic Wars, 1805 to 1815. So that is the game in a nutshell. There is, of course, a lot more going on here in this game. This is a, a, a kind of grand strategic Napoleonic uh, type game. Now I gotta tell you, I've been looking for years for a kind of strategic level Napoleonic game that I thought really worked. And there's a few that have come close. Napoleon in Europe, um, I thought was a pretty good game. I used to have that. I got rid of it a long time ago when I moved and it's one of those I kind of kicked myself about. Uh, that was a Glenn Drover design. It was a little long, but it, yeah, I, I liked it. You could play the scenarios and stuff. And then, of course, there was the um, uh, Wars of Napoleon, which I think was a Phalanx game, and, and, and it was a card-driven game, and that one was pretty cool, too. Um, but I haven't played that one. I haven't played that one for a while, either. So, um, but I'm looking for like a really good one because it's tricky because unlike say an Axis and Allies where you've got these set alliances, with the Napoleonic Wars there's that idea of Austria and Prussia and Russia switching sides and I almost think when you make it you kind of have to make a game that's not even really a war game, it just has aspects of a war game. I recently played and reviewed Coalitions which was a Kickstarter game from Phalanx and I thought that kind of handled it well because to me that felt like it was more of a negotiation game that had some combat in it and it played pretty quickly. Uh, it was a good game, and I really liked it a lot, um, but I don't think it had that kind of epic, quite had that epic feel that I'm looking for in like a Napoleonic war game. Uh, because like I say, it's not really a war game. I'm kind of torn here in what I want from a Napoleonic war game. Uh, I, 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 I suppose I could define my quest for a Napoleonic war game like the Supreme Court defined pornography. Uh, I can't really tell you what it is, but I know it when I see it. 
Uh, it's just something that I'm trying to, it, it's like my white well, my ultimate goal of finding that strategic level uh, Napoleonic game. So I looked at coalitions here and I'm kind of hoping this might be it. Well, here's the thing. My friends and I played this. We played a five player game in which all of the belligerents were represented except for Spain. It's kind of controlled by France, at least initially. And we're playing the game and it was pretty interesting, but very quickly it becomes apparent the various belligerents do switch sides. And they switch sides with the card play. And it's kind of hard, you know, some of the players that were playing some of these countries say it's kind of hard to be focused on, on a strategy, defeating France, and then suddenly it's, oh, now we're defeating the other guys. And, and it made a long-term strategy kind of difficult um, for these players. They didn't quite know how to play it. And consequently, what we took away from that was um, it's really fundamentally a two-player game. This should be a, considered a two-player game. Um, it's got some real, uh, it's got a real feel of a two-player game where you can then just take over those countries. But having individuals play them was problematic, and especially because, like, um, uh, Aaron played Prussia, and he really didn't get, get to do much. He didn't have very big armies, and he was steamrolled pretty quickly, and it just, you know, he was not having fun. So fundamentally, I think this needs to be a two-player game. I kind of got it out again and just by myself kind of played through a few turns. And I kind of saw, okay, this, this would work much better as a two-player game. <clears throat> so that's the first thing. Um, but, you know, having, having said that, let me just say, I think I really liked the battle matrix in this game. I really liked how you... Winning the, the victories led to the glory points, which translated to victory points. thought that was well done. <clears throat> I liked, um, generally, I liked the each each round you had kind of two moves. And I liked the card play. Um, I liked the, the the coalition, how the, the British player has to decide, I've got this, uh, these economic points, I can spend these in certain ways to help me, or I can build a coalition, and I really need a coalition. And it kind of felt thematic to me in the way that Britain really invested a lot of its resources in building up its coalitions during these wars. I thought that was a very, uh, very well done thing. Uh, one, of the, one of the other problems I had was that those tracks um, for the British, the French, and the other belligerents that were the economic and resource points, the glory points and whatnot, they're very crowded. You have tons of chits because you you're constantly going through trying to find yours to move it. I really wish that you could just keep track of those like on your player aid. You each have these like yeah, uh, kind of player aid things, and it'd be better if, if that worked, if you could just track it on a player rate. I would have liked that much better. So that was another issue I had. <clears throat> but I, I really enjoyed, um, I, I think this game came, comes pretty good in a relatively limited amount of time of giving you an, an epic feel. Now, is this my white whale that I've been looking for in Napoleonic games? No, probably not, but it comes pretty close. I think this is a good, um, if you're looking for a good straight war game, with card play. I think this one works very well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, if you're looking for a good two-player Napoleonic War game, I think this is probably going to really work for you. If you're looking for that grand multiplayer war game, I can't recommend it there. Uh, I think you got to play this thing two-player to really get everything out of it and to not have people sitting around and being bored. Uh, so recommendation is, as a two-player game, I recommend it and uh, buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, please give us a thumb on Board Game Geek. And I'd ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and fun topics like that. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I recently reached out to my psychiatrist. I wanted to see if he could see me uh, to talk about my crippling claustrophobia. And he said, sure, I'll, I'll squeeze you in. Somebody help me on my feet again